Have you ever heard of an engine that was advertised as fuel efficient, yet ended up bankrupting its owners? That's the story of the GM 8.2 liter Detroit diesel fuel pincher, an engine once hailed as the answer to America's fuel crisis of the early 1980s. As gas prices skyrocketed and everyone sought better mileage, General Motors believed they had created the perfect solution, a modern, lightweight, affordable, four-stroke diesel. But the so-called fuel pincher, meant to save fuel, ended up pinching its owner's pocketbooks instead. Rather than rescuing GM's reputation, it became one of the most embarrassing engineering failures in Detroit Diesel's history. A painful reminder of what happens when cost-cutting takes priority over quality. Since the late 1930s, Detroit Diesel had been one of General Motors' proudest divisions. Their two-stroke engines, affectionately nicknamed Big Green Leakers, were legendary for their durability, simplicity, and endurance. They leaked oil everywhere, leaving green stains across shop floors, but no one cared because they simply never quit running. By the late 1970s, however, America was a different place. The oil crisis had sent fuel prices skyrocketing, and new government regulations demanded better efficiency. The old two-stroke diesels were now seen as gas-guzzling dinosaurs. Fleet operators wanted something lighter, cleaner, and more efficient. Under growing pressure, GM made a bold decision to reinvent itself with an all-new four-stroke diesel engine, cheaper to build, lighter to carry, and far more fuel efficient. And so, in 1980, General Motors officially introduced the Detroit Diesel 8.2-liter V8 fuel pincher, a bold attempt to reclaim its leadership position. GM promoted it as Detroit Diesel's first-ever four-stroke engine, marking a major turning point after decades of building two strokes. The name Fuel Pincher, literally, the one who squeezes fuel, was chosen to symbolize its mission of saving fuel in an era when every gallon felt like liquid gold. The engine was designed for medium-duty trucks, buses, and commercial vehicles. With the displacement of 500 cubic inches equal to 8.2 liters, it promised a balance between pulling power and fuel efficiency. GM confidently claimed it was the most economical and durable diesel ever built. Companies like Ford and GMC quickly installed it in their trucks, hoping to attract economy-minded buyers. But within just a few years, the dream collapsed. Owners quickly realized the fuel pincher was far from powerful. The standard version produced only 130 horsepower and 318 pound-feet of torque, shockingly low numbers for a diesel engine weighing over half a ton. Medium-duty truck drivers struggled on uphill grades, while bus operators complained the engine screamed like it was about to explode just to reach 50 miles per hour. GM tried to fix the problem with a turbocharged version, boosting output to around 250 horsepower and 500 pound-feet of torque. Yet it still fell short of rivals like the Caterpillar 3208, renowned for its strength and durability. The numbers looked decent on paper, but real-world performance dropped rapidly after only a few thousand miles. Ironically, while the fuel pincher truly consumed less fuel, the savings never came close to offsetting its catastrophic repair costs. When Detroit diesel engineers began tearing the engine down, they discovered the shocking truth. The very block design GM called innovative was what destroyed it. In an effort to reduce weight and costs, GM adopted an open deck block design, meaning the cylinders stood freestanding within the coolant jacket instead of being cast into the block. On paper, this promised better cooling, less noise, and easier casting. In reality, 
it was a mechanical nightmare. The massive compression of a diesel engine caused the cylinder walls to flex microscopically with every stroke, unevenly distributing pressure. Over time, this flexing tore the head gaskets, letting coolant seep into the combustion chambers and causing hydrolock, a deadly condition where liquid cannot compress, bending rods, shattering pistons, or even cracking the block. To make matters worse, GM reduced the number of head bolts to save costs. While the Caterpillar 3208 used 18 bolts per head, the fuel pincher had only four per cylinder, some shared between adjacent cylinders. The result? Insufficient clamping, blown gaskets, and heads that literally lifted under pressure. When the first units hit the road, operators quickly realized the engine's lifespan was painfully short. Only 130,000 to 140,000 miles before a full rebuild, while rivals from Cummins or Caterpillar easily lasted over 350,000 miles. Rebuilding didn't help. Boring the cylinders weakened the block even further, and mechanics described the engine as shaking itself apart right on the frame. Many shops refused to rebuild them altogether, knowing the same failure would return. The phrase fuel pincher rebuild became infamous across trucking yards, synonymous with massive bills and endless downtime. But the disaster ran deeper. In pursuit of lighter weight, GM designed short pistons with minimal skirts, making them unstable under compression. The pistons rocked and scuffed the cylinder walls, causing uneven wear, vibration, and oil leaks. As one mechanic put it, those pistons swung like pendulums. Every rev sounded like a hammer in the block. With every mile, compression faded, blue smoke poured from the exhaust, and the engine grew louder and rougher. For something GM once promoted as modern and refined, the fuel pincher was anything but. What surprises many people is that the fuel pincher disaster wasn't GM's first time shooting itself in the foot. Just a few years earlier came the Chevrolet Vega, another engineering breakthrough that quickly became a customer nightmare. And ironically, both failures were born from the same flawed philosophy, trading durability for cost savings. Both Vega and Fuel Pincher used open deck blocks with freestanding cylinders, a design GM proudly claimed offered better cooling, lighter weight, and quieter operation. In reality, it made the block weaker, more prone to warping, and notorious for blowing head gaskets. The same fatal flaw, whether it ran on gasoline or diesel. Vega earned the nickname the disposable car, while the fuel pincher became known as the one-season diesel. What's worse is that GM already knew the consequences from Vega's failure, yet repeated the same mistake with the fuel pincher in the name of manufacturing efficiency. It was the perfect example of Detroit's misguided corporate mindset of the era, where the balance sheet mattered more than engineering integrity. The results were equally tragic. Vega destroyed public trust in Chevrolet's small cars, while the fuel pincher dragged Detroit Diesel to its lowest point. By the mid-1980s, Detroit Diesel's reputation was in ruins. After countless breakdowns and warranty claims from the 8.2-liter fuel pincher, the company's market share had plummeted to just 3%, its lowest point in history. Once a proud symbol of American engineering, Detroit Diesel had become a name fleet operators dreaded. Then came Roger Penske, racing legend, businessman, and master strategist. When General Motors sold its stake in Detroit Diesel during a corporate restructuring, Penske saw potential where others saw failure. His first move, eliminate the fuel pincher entirely. Penske insisted that GM keep producing the 8.2 liter under its own responsibility, 
while he rebuilt the brand's credibility around newer, better designs, most notably the Detroit Diesel Series 60, a modern, efficient, and extremely durable engine. Within just a few years, under his leadership, Detroit Diesel's market share soared from 3% to 10%, marking one of the greatest comebacks in American trucking history. When the dust settled, the only thing people could still smile about from the fuel pincher era, ironically, was its logo. GM's design team had gone all in on branding, creating a striking emblem, a stylized fuel droplet being squeezed between two metallic arcs, symbolizing power through efficiency. Though the engine itself was a disaster, its logo remains one of the most eye-catching industrial emblems of the 1980s. Even today, you can find fuel pincher hats and nameplates on auction sites and at vintage truck shows. For collectors, these aren't symbols of success. They're mechanical relics, reminders of a time when Detroit struggled to balance ambition with reality. It's poetic in a way that the logo meant to represent fuel efficiency became the icon of one of GM's most expensive failures. Yet it also stands as part of Detroit Diesel's legacy, a reminder that even the biggest mistakes can teach invaluable lessons. For enthusiasts, just seeing that emblem is enough to recall an era when innovation, pride and failure coexisted under one bold name, Fuel Pincher. Have you ever seen a truck or bus powered by the Detroit Diesel 8.2-liter Fuel Pincher? Maybe you've heard it rattle, shake, or blow clouds of white smoke on the highway. Share your memories or stories in the comments. Do you think this was the worst diesel engine GM ever built? Stories like the fuel pincher remind us that behind every engineering failure lies a lesson worth remembering. If you enjoy uncovering the shocking truths behind Detroit's forgotten engines, make sure to like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell. There are many more legends waiting to be told, from brilliant machines that were killed too soon to bold ideas left behind in America's automotive history.